Welcome to Any Way You Slice It, where we talk about your identity and purpose in the kingdom of God. Come join author Ricardo Richardson as we slice our way to the core of God's Word to experience the beautiful and transformational discovery of who we are and why we exist, no matter how we slice it. Today's message is Heritage Fulfilled. Beloved family, our text says, I have loved you, says the Lord. But you ask, how have you loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, declares the Lord? Yet I have loved Jacob, but Esau I have hated. And I have turned his country into a wasteland and left his inheritance to the desert jackals. Malachi 1, 2-3 When we read this verse, the question that comes to mind is how can God hate Esau? When God is love, how can he hate anyone? In biblical text, sometimes it's important to study the context. The prophet Malachi is referring not to the man Esau, but his descendants, the Edomites, the people from Edom, who would later become fierce enemies of the Israelites and descendants of Jacob. But it's also important to note that when God speaks, he speaks not only to us or about us, he also speaks to our unborn children or descendants. When he told the Israelites that they would inherit the promised land, he was speaking to the unborn generation that was born in the wilderness. Because the generation that got the promise never entered except Caleb. However, the children got the inheritance fulfilled. It's important to note that Paul also makes reference to the inheritance of Jacob and Esau in the context that it's God's right to choose whom he desires. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. Exodus 33, 19. And in Romans, we read, For this was how the promise was stated. At the appointed time, I will return, and Sarah will have a son. Not only that, but Rebekah's children were conceived at the same time by our father Isaac. Yet, before the twins were born or had done anything good or bad, in order that God's purpose of election might stand, not by works, but by him who calls, she was told, the older will serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. Romans 9, 9-13 But it's interesting to note that Esau gave up his birthright or inheritance for a bowl of soup. He was thinking more about his stomach, his flesh, than about his spirit. Now we can relate to what Paul writes in Philippians. Their destiny is destruction, their God is their stomach, and their glory is in their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. Philippians 3, 19-20 So it's clear that this is about the heritage or inheritance of God being fulfilled as promise by faith to Abraham. Throughout the Old Testament scriptures, we hear about the promised land that God promises Abraham and his descendants. And today, his descendants, Palestinians and Jews, are still fighting over physical land. They missed it. Revelation 21.10 says, And he carried me away in the spirit to a mountain great and high, and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of the heaven from God. There it is, the holy land inheritance fulfilled. But now look at what Paul also illustrates that is more about the spiritual than the physical. For not all who are descendant from Israel are Israel. Nor because they are his descendants are they all Abraham's children. On the contrary, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. In other words, it is not the children of physical descent that are God's children. But it is the children of the promise who are regarded as Abraham's offspring. For this was how the promise was stated. At the appointed time, I will return and Sarah will have a son. Romans 9, 6 to 9. Oh, family, this is getting good. Remember, we learned that the Old Testament is being fulfilled in the new by King Jesus. 
Now at the appointed time, the promise made to the woman Sarah, excuse me, the woman Mary will have a son. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Matthew 1, 21-22 So as Isaac was the son of promise, so was the Lord Yeshua, King Jesus Christ, the son of promise from the Father. Not only was the Son promised, but so was the Spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit and Spirit of Truth. Jesus commanded them, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my Father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Acts 1, 4-5 The Word of God and the Holy Spirit is the gift's heritage or inheritance of the children of God. Jesus says to his disciples, the Holy Spirit will remind you of every word that I taught you. This is the inheritance to the children of God, because it is not the children by physical descent who are God's children, but it is the children of the promise. This beloved family is our inheritance and our heritage fulfilled. Much love.